Okay, so welcome back to another, you know, uh, I don't know even how to call this, another sound design with Mini B tutorial. So on this one, uh, we're not going to do six, uh, six, we're going to do four. And this time I'm going to just try to make it shorter because maybe 40 minutes of video is way too much. So we're going to do a different track. So I'm going to go and play what we have so far, what we have right now. And of course, sounds like crap. So we have some vase, some arps, some pads, and some leaps, and some leads. Pretty simple stuff. Now, of course, if I go and play just the drums, pretty simple drums. We're always, you know, on this uh, kind of a synth wave, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm always trying to uh, be on the in the groove of whatever it is I'm doing right now, and I'm doing synth wave. Maybe tomorrow, I don't know, I'm gonna do trance, whatever, right? So as you know, I keep going doing things on the channel. I'm just gonna do different different styles, uh, and the, of course, kind of a EDM or electronic music. Let's say you know between quotes, uh, I could do blues or rock. <laughs> I would love to do this, uh, to do that. But maybe this is not the channel for that one. You know, for to do blues, for example. Although I would love would love to do blues. So okay, so we need to build the bass. Right now we have the drums. So I'm gonna go right here and uh, play the bass which just sounds like a fart, by like something farting. So I'm gonna go uh, to here and just gonna open the default. So remember, we need to do a bass and the uh, saw is gonna give you the grid of the bass and the this one, the triangle, is gonna give you the fundamental. So I'm gonna go all the way to on the fundamental. Maybe I'm gonna keep it on 16, 16 something low because eight is just maybe too much. Uh, maybe I'm gonna keep this one and see what happens. I'm gonna go all the way on the volume. I'm gonna go all the way on the volume and volume all the way up. And right from the start, you're gonna have something. And of course, remember with the bass, you always need to do the filtering. It already sounds like a bass. I'm gonna disable this one and go down on the cutoff. And we get that, you know, that nice synth wave bass. All right, let's do a little bit more contour. I'm gonna do unison right away. It sounds amazing. Maybe a little bit of detune. And the voices are just unison, which is way too much. I'm gonna do something much shorter, maybe five. That's a bit better, you know, more kind of a... Not so big, because this is just... No, this is just too big for a bass. This one is just gonna keep it on the same place, which is nice for a bass. Okay, so I'm gonna go maybe here, gonna do a little bit more decay. And notice that whenever you do decay, you get much more of the grit. I'm gonna go and sustain. And this is gonna give you more body again, more grit. And in terms of the loudness, again, it's always the same thing. A little bit of attack. And then the decay is gonna give you body. Now, of course, we are doing a lot of cut of soap. So that's it, you know, that's, that's the base. What else do you want? It sounds like it's shit. And I'm not gonna do even gonna do anything on the advanced because again, it sounds good on its own. Now what maybe I'm gonna do is maybe disable the advanced and do a little bit of effects. Not with the delay, just with the chorus and do a little bit. And notice like this is the kind of a too raw. The chorus is gonna give us a little bit more. So using bass and chorus, it's kind of the oldest trick in the book. Um, it's very, um, it's something we do the, the whole time whenever we do a bass. And I'm just, you know, on this style of music, on pretty much everything. If you do rock, a little bit of, you know, a, a chorus or a little bit of detuning, uh, it's just going to help you out with, with the bass, even if you do blues or rock. Okay, so that's the bass, right? Pretty simple. Now, of course, we need to do a little bit of side chaining. So I'm gonna go and do the kickstart so I can do a simple side chain and not spend a lot of time uh, working with the, with the compressor. So I'm gonna go and it gives, a, it gives us that right away. That vibe, the synthway vibe. All right, so the next one is gonna be an ARP. All right, so let's take care of the ARP. I'm gonna go right here and uh, we are always starting from the default patch. So uh, what I'm gonna go, okay, so I'm gonna go right here and uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna go to eight. Now, maybe this one, I'm gonna keep it on unison because this is an ARP, we are not playing chords. 
so or maybe two keys at the same time so unison is give, is going to give us that you know kind of a grit so i'm going to keep it on the five on unison 16 is just way too much for unison and that's uh, of course just my opinion uh okay i'm going to keep it on the eight uh, i'm going to go here and do maybe a square just to get some some different sound and i'm going to go and get the fundamental right here at the bottom with this one and okay, I'm going to go up the volume, up the volume, up the volume. And right from the start, we're going to get something. I'm going to do a little bit of detuning right here so we can get something else from the uh, from the oscillators. And right from the start, we are going to get something like an ARP. And that's the sound I want. That's the sound I want. With the, uh, you know, the width right here, we can mess with the width if we wanted to. Maybe I'm going to make it a little bit, you know, like there, and maybe I'm gonna go and make it smaller. Why not? Because we are using the same the same width. So when we, you whenever you make it different, okay, it's okay. That sounds fine. Now the the uh, problem right now is that it's way too much. So I'm gonna do a little bit of clipping just to chop the high, you know, the peaks. And notice that the keeps the the peaks are just kind of going away now. If I turn this off, uh, of course. Notice it's just way too much. This one is gonna chop the peaks. All right. Another thing I need to do is to modify the envelope because the sound is kind of a too big. If I keep this the way it is and then I add, add reverb and chorus and whatever, it's just the ARP is gonna uh, kind of uh, take the whole track. It's gonna occupy a lot of space. So I'm just gonna need to kind of uh, make it, you know, a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna maybe do it like there. I'm gonna keep this right here. And I'm just gonna stop, you know, kind of uh, chopping a little bit of frequencies. Let's see how this sounds. And now it's just much better. It's kind of a plug sound. Again, a lot of space, taking the whole track, just taking one space. And whenever you do you do sound design, you build uh, sounds, you always need to think about that. How much space is this sound is going to, you know, occupy? Because if this is too big, it's going to be on top of everything. If I add a pad or lead or something else much later, it doesn't matter because the ARP is going to be on top of everything, occupying uh, pretty much all the frequencies. So you always need to think about that when you build the sound. Since this one is an ARP, it's just a kind of a staccato sound that stays, stays there. It's not going to go crazy. And it all, already sounds like an ARP. All right, so let's do a little bit of effects. Why not? I'm going to go over there. And since the only thing we can do is course, but the delay is gonna, it's gonna help a lot. Already sounds nice. Okay, so let me just mute this one. Okay, so it sounds cool. Maybe we can do a little bit of modulation. So let me go right here and do off and just remove everything we have right here. And notice we are going much faster than the old one. The first video I did, I did on this series was the first one. So kind of a, I was kind of a trying to figure things out. I'm going to do an LFO. And remember the LFO is something that we get right here. We can sync to the DAW tempo. So maybe I'm going to go and I'm going to go faster. Why not? So the LFO, uh, we're going to use the LFO to modulate something. And since we are using squares, why not modulating the, the pulse width? Why? Right? Why not? So, okay, so let's just do play and see what happens. Notice it changes the sound. And sometimes, again, when you build sound, uh, when you build a sound, uh, you just, you're not just looking for, uh, you know, for pitch or maybe a filter. You're just looking for movement. That's why you use compressors as well. They give you a little bit of movement and in a track, if everything is kind of a uh, very uh, stale or just on the same place, it's just gonna suck. And that's why you need movement. And it's very hard. It's just a hard thing to do or to learn. Uh, and it's something that you learn as you go uh, to hear the movement, you know, the, the, the uh, going forward, back and forth, and the compressor just, you know, going up in volume on the track, or maybe the kick is the snare, or maybe the kick, the drums with the bass and just merging everything. It's just something very hard to hear. 
and it just takes practice. In this case, I just want to add a little bit of movement and this will just bring life. Right now, it's just super static. This one, movement. I'm gonna do velocity since we I, we didn't do this much and I'm gonna go to the cutoff to help the cutoff just do a little bit more with the velocity of each MIDI. All right, so that's fine. I can like it. Now maybe we can do a little bit more. Let's, uh, you know, let me just go down this one. It already sounds like a synthwave track. All right, so this is pretty much done, I guess. I can, uh, you know, I can like it. Since we are doing unison, maybe we can do more spread, but it's just too much. I kind of like it right there. Okay, so another thing we can do is, of course, do a side chain. So I'm gonna go to the ARP and do the side chain. And sometimes it's just a bit too much. So I'm gonna go and just do something like this. Now, again, this one sounds cool, but it sounds, uh, Sounds a little bit too dry for me. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a holla uh, reverb. And I'm gonna put it before the side chain. Now, of course, that is just way too much. I'm gonna go maybe do five milliseconds, which is some something normal, let's say. And I'm gonna go mix 15% and do not, so something not that big. And this one will give you depth. Notice that the sound right now, it's kind of in your face because it has no depth. The reverb is gonna give you that depth and it will move the ARP a little bit, you know, backward in the mix. Because the ARP, want it or not, is not like the hero right here. It's gonna be the lead. So if the ARP is kind of a right in your face, it's gonna be on top of the lead and it's gonna be a big mess. All right, so another thing we can do is to uh, kind of uh, spread the stereo in this one. And I'm gonna go and do the stereo split. And you can do this with a dual delay on Ableton if you're using Ableton. So I'm gonna go and bring a delay. And the theory is the same. You're just gonna target one side of the spectrum, you know, the right speaker or the left speaker. And you're just gonna disable everything and make it 100% wet. And just go. And 10 milliseconds and maybe 10 or 20, it's just normal. If you go more, there, you're gonna start getting this movement to, between left and right, which could, you know, uh, could fuck up the whole mix, just to be honest. So, just a little bit, it's fine. This one will bring uh, width, right? It's just moving it to the sides. Another thing that might happen, and this is, again, I'm just doing a little bit more, just gonna, uh, you know, just take you one step further is the EQing, and this is, everything I'm doing is not just sound designing, it's, this is a little bit of mixing. Notice that the mo the whole frequencies we care about this ARP are gonna be right here. This is what we care. But we still have something right here. So this is with the kick, part of the snare, and the bass lips. If you have this sound right here, occupying frequencies, is going to cover the other one. So you always want to create a little bit of separation between instruments and sounds. And this is mixing, uh, not, you know. But in this case, we can maybe do a tiny cut right here. And now remove those frequencies that we really don't need. Now, if this one needs a bit more presence, what we can do, we can go to the 3K or 4K, and this one will make the uh, ARP jump a little bit more kind of in your face, because it's gonna alter the presence. It's just gonna be much more present. Okay, so if we play it in context... Alright, maybe we can do a little bit more. Right. I kinda like it. Alright, so what's the next step is gonna be the pads. And the pads, just, you know, with a default patch, sucks. Alright, so, you know, I'm not even gonna hear the default. I'm gonna go right here and the pad, it's just pretty much some some ports, just like this. And remember, in using a kind of a construction kit, I modify some of the things we have right here, I guess. Um, but it's just some ports, right? Pretty simple. Now, remember, by default, the uh, 
the Mini V, it's monophonic. So you're going to need to make it polyphonic. If not, it's just going to sound weird, just like it sounds right here. Sounds like a fart. So I'm going to go and make it polyphonic and now things are going to change. All right, so of course, it sounds like crap. Let's just make it a little bit better. I'm going to keep the 8. I'm going to keep the 8 right here, the range. And I'm going to, eh, why not keep the 8 right here. I'm going to go and do a little bit of detuning to the left with the right mouse plus, and I'm going to do minus maybe 20. It's just a bit too much sometimes. It's going to do a little bit less. Cool. I'm going to keep the saw and I'm going to keep the saw right here. And why not? I'm just going to do three saws and see what happens. Then if, if you don't like it, we can change it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to go and of course do this. We have this one on, this one on, and this one on. Cool. Let's see how this works. So much better, right? Okay, so of course we need uh, to do a little bit more, a little bit more magic. We are using polyphonic mode, of course. So I'm going to keep this one on and I'm going to keep this one off. So we are going to kind of reduce the impact of the of the envelope and the key, the keyboard control. And I'm going to go down maybe just to chop down some frequencies. And remember, this is a pad. It needs to be in the back, not in the front. And you hear that popping? So we don't need that popping. So I'm going to go and just do the envelope so we can have a more pad sound. And we don't have that popping anymore. Maybe a little bit of decay. Oh, that's good. So of course the decay, it's opening this one a little bit more. It's just kind of opening this one a little more. And uh, of course we get a little bit of the high frequencies we get with the uh, with the saw, right? Because that that's what the saw is. It's just pure harmonics. So I'm gonna go. It's nice, I like it. A little bit of sustain. Okay, so I do like it, but uh, we need to make it a little bit better because first of all, it's just too bright and it's too in your face. So I'm going to need to move it backwards just a little bit more. So I'm going to go there. We're going to do a little bit of effects and a little bit of delay just to move this to the back. And you're going to see that this one alone will move it to the back just a little bit, of course, not, you know, crazy amount, maybe a little bit less on the feedback. And okay, it's going a little bit crazy. All right, so I guess uh, there is fine. I'm gonna do a little bit less. A little bit less rate. Okay, I think it's cool. Now, let's see if we can do something on the modulation. I'm gonna go right here and just, you know, Go, I'm going to go right here and just delete everything. And maybe we can do a tiny LFO, right? Just to bring a little bit of uh, movement. I'm going to do a mid sync. And what can we move? Let's just move the pitch. Because we are not using a uh, square, so we cannot do the pulse with modulation. Maybe we can mess with the envelope, but let's see what happens if we do, uh, if we do a pitch. And I'm talking about a tiny amount of pitch. Right now, this is going to go crazy. <laughs> no. Just a little bit. You know how, how... No? Super small. And I'm using the this wave, the uh, sine wave, which is a little bit more, you know, it's not that crazy. But you know what? I feel like it needs something, so I'm going to go and just... I'm going to go in and do something else. I'm going to go this time to the motion recorder. Remember this one? So in this one, I'm going to go and do uh, boys one, two, three. You know, the uh, BCO one, two, three and the FN. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of noise. So I'm going to go there and you know what? I'm going to go and just make a straight line. And on this one, I'm just going to paint it with noise. So of course, the noise well, uh, this one will, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, the frequencies will move up following the noise. So this one will give us this movement we want, but at the same time, it's going to give us a little bit of randomness, which is nice sometimes. 
So, uh, maybe it's, the amount is too much. Let's do play and see what happens. And notice if I go here, make it something like that. Oh, of course I need to turn it on. <laughs> no. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna just do a little bit. Let me just stop it because it's just killing me. Okay, so I'm gonna go there and just make it there. And I'm gonna go there and just... I'm gonna do a tiny bit. I, 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 don't, I don't... You almost need to not hear this. This needs to be in the very background, okay? So I'm gonna do play. If I turn it off... So this is how it works. Uh, you play this, you know, with emotion, with whatever it is that you're doing. And you just hear it a few seconds, right? You just listen for a few seconds. And then you turn it off. And if you really can tell the difference and you feel like there's something missing, so what, whatever it is that you're doing, it's, it's cool. So I, I feel like this tiny movement is what I want. Maybe it's too fast, I'm gonna go here. I kind of like it, but I'm going to go a little bit less. Okay, so I feel that is good. Alright, so I'm going to go and just close this. Now the pad is way too loud. I'm going to go there and play it in context. So again, it's way too loud. It needs to be in the background. Okay, so uh, of course the bass is going to be on the low frequencies, the ARP is going to be on the mid, let's say high frequencies. So the pad, uh, maybe we want to do a little bit of EQing, I'm going to just bring the EQ, and I'm going to do a little bit of side chaining right here, just like we did with the kickstart. So I'm going to bring the side chain, and you know, first I need to drag it, and I'm going to drop it right here. So let's see how it sounds now. Much better, right? Just right from the start, much better. Because the side chain is kind of a, a gluing all all the, all this all the instruments tracks, and it's letting the kick, you know, kind of a jump, which is what we want. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the pad, and we have the same problem we have with the ARP. It's maybe doing a little bit too much of the lows, so I'm gonna go and just chop it. Now, right here, notice this bump. Sometimes on some tracks, whenever you have a lot of mid-low frequencies on the 320, 350, 400, it's going to create a kind of a buildup and it will give you mud. So in this case, I'm just gonna go and bring it down just a little bit. Now, since you're cutting, maybe you want to do a little bit of boosting. So I want this one, I want the high frequencies. I remember the three and the four and the five are just presses. Now, alone, it doesn't sound that good. But again, it sounds right, right up there. Now, in context, I believe it's gonna sound much better. If I turn it off, it kind of disappears. So this is one of the things of EQing your instruments. You're cutting things that you don't really want because they're gonna be on top of all the things. And then you just boost the thing that you really want to hear about this, which in this case, I want to hear more of the high frequencies. And this one is gonna let that, sound, that part of the sound go, you know, just be a little bit in front so you can hear it. And, uh, and of course, everything else is not gonna go over the other ones because you're cutting. That's what why EQ and then compression is just, you know, the main, uh, the most important thing that you need to do. Uh, not on every track, sometimes you don't need EQ or sometimes you don't need compression, but yeah, you, you, will need, you need to know how to uh, use compression. For example, the kick, the snare, and the head, and the bass, I would love to do a compression right here just to kind of, uh, you know, add that groove and just to kind of control this a little bit better. And I would love to use a compressor to control a little bit of the kick right here. Okay, but that's fine. We are not doing that. This is not a mixing video. I'm going to go and do the lead, and by default, it sounds like shit. All 
All right, so that's the lead. So of course we're gonna go to right here and we're gonna start with the lead. So what do I want? I want something, of course, something that goes not on top of everything, but something that you hear and you notice is there. And if you remove it, it's like you're lacking something. That's that's the vibe I want. But I don't want something that goes on top, right? It's, it's the only thing we hear is the lead and everything is just way in the back. I I, I don't like that in, the, in this case. So I'm going to go to 16, maybe to 8, uh, just to keep high frequencies. And this one I'm going to go maybe to the 8. Mm, I believe that's fine. I'm going to keep the saw because this one is, gives, it gives us a lot of presence, just like the, uh, you know, the square. In this case, saw is just fine. I'm going to go do a little bit of volume, a little bit of volume right here. Because if uh, maybe the three saws at full volume is just going to be a bit, a bit too much. So, yeah. So, all right. So, okay. So, let's uh, just detune a little bit. And this is kind of a frequent thing for me. And I'm going to go 10 is okay. And then I'm going to go 10 right here. All right. So, right now, should we be getting something a little bit better? And it sounds good. Or oh, it sounds cohesive. So this is the sound we want. And, note, and this is what I'm telling you. Now it's kind of a, in the background. Of course, we need to do a little bit more work. But if I remove it, there's something missing, man. All right, so this is what we need to do, all right? We need to make it better because right now it just sounds like shit. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, saturation just to chop the frequencies, the super, you know, the peaks. Maybe it's a bit too much. Just a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna go to the decay right here, just to do it now. I'm gonna go there, maybe there under sustain, and I'm gonna go and start cutting. Maybe a little bit of this. And, okay, that's fine. So I'm gonna go and bring a little bit more. A little bit of attack, why not? Maybe the volume is just Way too low. And I'm gonna go and do unison. And this again will change how everything sounds. First of all, it's gonna go louder. Because we are using a million voices. So, nope, I just want six. And I'm gonna detune and this one will give you that beehive we talked on the other videos. Now, if you go too, f too far, you're still gonna get, you're, you get this detuning and it's way too much. Maybe there it's just, a bit more acceptable. If we do glide, it's way too much. Nope. A little bit, maybe. That's fine. Now, of course, this one needs a little bit of depth and a little bit of actually, you know, something else. So, what can we do? Maybe we can do the same trick we did right, right, uh, you know, before with the modulation and the, the cutoff with the velocity, since this is kind of a an arpeggio. That's what it is. Uh, I'm going to go there and I'm going to select the velocity. And I'm going to go and say that we want to move the cutoff. And we already did all of this. And at this point, you know, I'm kind of repeating myself. All right, so let's see what happens. I'm going to go do play. Nothing. It's just a bit more dull. This one gives us a little bit more ag aggressiveness. If we do more, it's going to be much, much more. I couldn't like it right there. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of effects because it's just too aggressive. I'm gonna go there. And do something like this. And do something like this. Much better, right? Much better. Let me just short, shorten the tempo. And if you wanna know how it sounds, I want something short, like a slack back, slap back delay. Something very short, it's not as, I wouldn't say it's just a full slap back, but something short. Okay. But of course, this is way too much. I'm gonna go here. And maybe I'm gonna go and try a different course. I can like the three, why not? Okay, so at this point, this one should sound good.
All right, so it sounds it sounds cool, but again, we have the same problem we have with the other ones. We need to do a little bit of cutting because it's just way too much. Just way too much. Notice all of this craziness is going on top of everything. And I don't want that. Maybe 224 is just a bit too much. I'm gonna do... Maybe that. Ah, you know what? I'm gonna do 24. All right. So maybe I'm gonna go remove a little bit of this. Right there, I'm gonna make a dollar. And then I'm just gonna boost the thing I want, which is the, pr the presence. Let me just go down this one just a little bit more. Now, one thing that, of course, we need is going to be the kickstart. Now, maybe this is too much. Let's see how it sounds. It's too much. All right, let's see how it sounds. All right. Now, this one is way too loud. Much better. Now, I think I'm going way too much on this. All right, and a little bit too much on the detune. Let's see how it sounds. Much better. And of course, this is just my opinion, you know? Maybe you like it more detuned. Why not? I can like it right there. Now, no. Let's go down to the cutoff. All right. Now, notice it's jumping way too much. We have a lot of peaks right here. And this is what, uh, why, you know, why you should use compressor. Well, this is a perfect, you know, place uh, to use a nice compressor, to use a nice saturation. We are already using a saturation, but this is not kind of a giving me what I want. So what I would use is just a plug-in, just to uh, add a little bit of uh, saturation, just maybe some tape saturation, and just to smooth all of this. But right now, this is the, could be start of a song, right? That's what we are doing right here, just creating the start of tracks. All right. So that's it. Maybe, you know what? I'm gonna go and do a dimension. This is one of my favorite plugins, not, not plugins, you know, if type of effects, let's, let's say, the dimension chorus. It just gives you more. Holy shit. And this is one, another thing that happens. Sometimes you hear something in solo and it sounds fantastic. And then you just put another track and it's just not working. And it's not working. Maybe if I lower the volume. And maybe go a little bit down to the 2D tune. All right. All right, again, so I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm crazy about this one, but that's it. All right, so that's it. We have, uh, we are created a, created a bass, an ARP, a pad, and a lead. And along with the other one, you know, with the previous video that took forever, we made like 10 patches. 10 different instruments. I don't know what else can I do for you. So hopefully you liked all of this. You learned something. We're going to do much more in this channel. So be sure, you know, make sure that you subscribe. You put the link and do the bell and check Patreon and all of this. I'm going to do a lot of since uh, kind of a series. I'm planning on doing tracks, doing mixing, doing uh, arranging. So I'm planning to do a lot. Uh, so this is kind of the starting, the, the start of all of this. So, okay. So. See you in the next one.